Good morning, RCC family. Good morning. Hey, man, I want to welcome you to our Sunday morning pre-recorded worship service on this Mother's Day. Amen. Amen. I want to give a shout out to all the moms. We love you. You're awesome. I look forward to July 4th seeing you in person. Uh, I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. I want to shout out to my mom, Catherine Harris, and Vanita's mom, uh, uh, Janet Fryson. And uh, we love you guys, moms. And I also want to give a shout out to my wife, who's a mom. And uh, honey, I love you so much. You're awesome. And family, her birthday is Monday. You know, and, uh, so I got a Mother's Day and birthday. I'm very grateful for you, babe. I cannot express uh, enough uh, how I'm so glad God gave you to me. I, I'm overwhelmed every day about thinking about you and uh, what God has blessed me with. Your humility, your love, your gentleness, your patience. And uh, don't have no desire for the spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> I got two other ones like that. Back <laughs> and I'm just so grateful for that. And uh, I, I just love you. And moms, I, I wish I could call all y'all by name. Uh, uh, I, I'm just so grateful for the mo moms that are in the RCC family. Uh, every one of you. Uh, it, it, you're, you inspire me with, for, with your love for God. Uh, the, the, your love for your children, uh, just your love uh, to, for the family of believers. Amen. Thank you so much, and I'm very grateful from the bottom of my heart. Amen? Amen. 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 And now I want my wife, we have, you wonder why we have such an awesome backup group behind us, but they're not our backups. <laughs> but uh, we have them uh, here, we have graduates coming up. I'm going to let my wife say a few words, and, and we have a gift from them from the RCC family. Amen. 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 Yes, let's give them a hand. Yes, we're very proud of our graduates. We have yes. two graduates this year. Yes. And, um, you know, graduating from high school is a big deal. Amen. I don't care what people say. They're in, and especially <laughs> this year, um, it's been very difficult in the school buildings and, and trying to get your courses <laughs> done. And, and we've been through a lot. So I'm very proud of these girls. Hey. And, and what they've accomplished this year. And I'm just looking forward to, to seeing them continue to grow uh, in their knowledge and, and in life as they turn another chapter. And we're very proud of them uh, in the RCC family. We yeah. love you guys a lot. So I'm going to call up Sabrice. Sabrice. Yeah. Sabrice Jamal. Sabrice Jamal. Thank you so much. This is just a small token of how much we appreciate you. We we're very proud of you and so thankful for what you've overcome. I know you've had a lot of obstacles this year. And God has been with you, Amen. and you guys are, have done it, and I'm very proud of you. And you guys get to walk this year, right? Yes. Oh, yes. man. So we're very excited about that. So awesome. Thank you. God bless you. And Kyla Charlie. Come on, hey. Kyla, congratulations to you as well. As you get ready to, to go out and I'll talk with you a little bit, you said you're getting ready to go to Florida State College. Yes. So we're very excited about that. We, you guys have our support and love and small token of just our appreciation for what you guys have done. And we're family. We're always here for you guys. Yes. So we want to support you not as, as we have in, in high school, but also as you, as you go to college. So Amen. Thank, you. thank you. Amen. Amen. So at this time, I asked Jamie to come up and pray for our graduates. Amen. Amen. One of the dads. Amen. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. God, thank you so much for this time for us to be able to celebrate our own here. Yes. Father, thank you so much for Kyla graduating from high school, mm -hmm. soon to attend Florida State College. Thank you so much for Sabrice also graduating, yes. Father, soon to uh, attend UCF. Amen. Father, I pray that more than anything, they can realize that you are everywhere. Yes. Father, as they grow uh, as young women, I pray that their hearts for you also grow. Please, God. Father, help, help them be a great example of what a woman of God should be uh, at an earlier age in life, Father. Please. Father, I pray that they are not intimidated by uh, the things that are out there that are outside of the households that they grew up in, but knowing that their relationship with you mm. will help them not be fearful. Yeah. Their walk with you uh, as it grows, Father, will give them all the courage they need. Yeah. Father, I pray that you give them success in their life because of their relationship with you, and they can be a shining example that uh, young women can be godly, Father, yeah. and also achieve academically or other ways in their life. Yes. Thank you so much for the love and support from everyone, whether they have been family or even church family, uh, for, for the future of these two women. Yes. Thank you so much for this time. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning, RCC family. Good morning. And thank you so much, graduates. I mean, for graduating high school, it was great. That was, that was awesome. And 
it's great that we get to honor our graduates, high school graduates. So this point of the service, we're going to uh, move into our communion service. And this is the part of the service where we focus on the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. My name is Sawa Thomas. I'm one of the brothers that serve here at the River City Christian Ministries. So um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to do this. I want to thank their, their eldership and, and God also for just allowing me to be able to do this. Amen. So when you think about the cross, I think about a song, Amazing Grace. And when I think about the song, it's so fitting because it, it, it is because of God's amazing grace that, that we're able to uh, participate in communion. Amen. So let's turn our Bibles to uh, Romans chapter five, verse, starting in verse six. And starting in verse six, it says, you see, at just the right time, when you were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, and it says at just the right time. You know, when you were still, when I was still powerless, Christ died for me. So even before I even made the commitment to be a Christian, Christ still died for me, which is which is a which is very powerful in, in, in that statement. Let's turn over to uh, first first Peter chapter two, verse uh, twenty one to twenty five. And it reads. It says to this you will call because Christ suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled insults at him, he did not hesitate. When he, when he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, we have been healed. So we've been healed by Christ going on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And, and that's, that's also a powerful statement in that. And when you think about the cross and you think about um, Christ dying for us, it, it's, for me, it's a, it's a new start. It's a new beginning. It's a clean slate. So let's turn over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verse 17. And it reads, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... The new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled himself to us through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. And we are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God was making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. You know, when we think about communion, we think about what it stands for. It's really a coming together. Amen. It's really us being reconciled to God. And, and for me, that's, that's very powerful because I know what I was before I became a Christian. And I know what I am now with God. So this morning, I pray as we reflect on the cross and we reflect on what God has done for us. We reflect on his amazing grace because this is a gift that we did not deserve. And this is a gift that was freely given to us simply because God loved us. And that we reflect on all of that as we take communion this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's pray for the communion. Dear God, thank you so much for your amazing grace. Thank you for allowing your son to die on the cross for our sins, God. We are so grateful. We are so thankful, God. God, we're thankful for the forgiveness of our sins, God. We're thankful for all that you have done for us and all that you will do for us, God. God, we're very grateful for this time that we get to reflect and just, uh, and just really show you gratitude for what you, all you have done, God. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sin. Thank you for being a new creation, God. Thank you for just that, that, that the old is gone and the new is here. God, I'm so grateful for that. We're so grateful, and we praise you in your son's name. Amen. 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 My name is Kenyatta Charlie. I'm one of the deacons here at the RCC, and I have the pleasure and honor to be able to uh, prepare our hearts for our contribution. I just Amen. want to thank our leadership for giving me the opportunity uh, just to uh, share some thoughts as we get ready to uh, give. Uh, we're going to go into the book of Acts, and we're going to start in chapter 4, and we're going to start reading at verse 35, actually right at about verse 36. And what I've started doing, the more I read the Bible, uh, you have to read the Bible um, in context. I think sometimes we can read things and we just, we don't get the full understanding. 
but we can read something and it leads into something else. So what I'm going to read, reads, leads into chapter five. So let's start. It says, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now, that's the end of that chapter. Prior to that, it says the believer shares their possessions and we go into chapter five. This is when we go to Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. It begins with now. There was a man named Ananias together with his wife, Sapphira, who sold a piece of property with his wife's full knowledge that he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? You know, today we're going to give a portion of what God has given to us. But whatever you have, it is your money. But the question is, are you giving what's God? Are you holding back a portion? We read numerous scriptures where God says, hey, I want you to give not out of compulsion, but with a cheerful heart. So as you give today, are you giving fully what belongs to God? Because I don't have to read the rest of the scripture. We know what happens. And thank God for his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness that uh, we're not held to that. But guess what? We will be held to that one day when we stand before God. We will have to answer to God. But uh, when we give, I pray that we give with a grateful heart, that we're not divided in giving, that we give wholeheartedly what belongs to God because everything we have comes from him. Let us pray. Father God, thank you so much, God, for the opportunity that we get to give back to you, God. I pray that we don't have divided hearts, God. I pray that we give joyfully, gratefully, God. I pray sometimes that we just give sacrificially, God, just knowing that you will take care of us, that you will provide for us, God. Uh, God, I pray that we don't lie to the Holy Spirit, God. Uh, it says that you did not lie just to humans, but you lied to the Holy Spirit. You lied before God. I pray that we don't do that in our hearts, God, as we come before you this time to give our contribution and our tithes. We love you. We thank you. We give you the praise, honor, and glory. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Julius Covington, and I'm one of the brothers that serves here at the RCC as well. Um, and I'm going to pray before Pastor Mark brings up the message. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord, for coming up on 10 years of the anniversary of the church, Lord, and almost being a Christian for 10 years, Lord, May 29th. And I'm grateful for that day. I remember that, May 29th, 2011, Lord. I hit the water, said Jesus was Lord, got up, Lord, and I, I'm just grateful that you've chosen me, Lord. I'm grateful that you've chosen us, Lord. I'm grateful that you, even your Bible says it, Lord, you look in the world looking for people which after your heart, Lord. And I'm grateful for that, Lord. I pray that we can continue to work, Lord. I pray that we can continue to just get on the grind of being Christians, Lord. That is not easy, but it's not hard, Lord. You just ask us to follow you, and I'm grateful for that, Lord. I pray that you continue to be with us, Lord. Be with Pastor Mark as he brings up the message, Lord. I pray that you speak through him wholeheartedly, Lord. Let us hear the word like we've never heard it before. And even if we have heard it, Lord, let it be new to us. I'm grateful for all that you do, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, family. God is good and all the time. My God is good. Amen. Amen. It's great to be in the kingdom of God. Uh, it's exciting to see our young graduates and their fathers. That was pretty cool. Uh, love you guys. Thank you all so much uh, for uh, just growing up. Uh, that's pretty cool uh, there uh, to have that here uh, doing our service. And uh, again, I'm, I'm excited about being here on this Mother's Day and I'm looking forward to getting in the word with you. Thank you so much, Sour, for working the cameras for me. Uh, thank you so much, Tim, coming up afterwards uh, to respond. I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, Royal, for being back. My brother is back. He's in the house. Yeah, it's good to, good to have him here with his wife there, Rochelle. I'm so, I love y'all so much. Thanks for your support. Thank you, Vanita, for being here uh, tonight. Love you, honey. Uh, you're my sister, too, but I love you, honey, and appreciate you. And, uh, and uh, thank you so much, Danny. Uh, for taking care of the sound back there, my brother. Appreciate that. And uh, I appreciate uh, you being in the background there for us there. And uh, thank you so much, JC. Ken, uh, appreciate you, brothers. Thank y'all for serving. 
and letting, allowing God to use you so we can worship. And I look forward to July 4th back in person. Come on now. Uh, keep I prayed up. And July 7th, our first midweek. I'm excited about all that. Uh, and guys, please keep me in prayer. Uh, I, I found out this week that my left knee surgery, full knee replacement would be July 12th, July 12th. And uh, so please keep me prayed up. And I've already talked to the brothers uh, to be able to uh, take care of the podium for me. I'm really excited about that. Uh, so but uh, man, I'm just uh, just looking forward to pray that I don't be anxious. I'm looking forward to get it done and getting it behind me. You know, uh, but uh, I don't want to be anxious. I want to be patient, trust the Lord, and, and, uh, and do the things Vinita asked me to do around the house. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Can I get a what, what? <laughs> amen. Well, family, let's get in the word. Amen. The title of my message today is From Death to Life. From Death to Life. My question is for us. How do we cross over from death to life? How do we do it? Turn for me to Romans chapter six. We're going to do some reading today. We're going to read the whole chapter almost. Let's read Romans chapter six, verse one through 23. And uh, we read now the NIV. And then I'm going to come back to the New King James Version and then go back to the NIV. Amen. So let's start at the New King, the NIV, Romans six, verse one. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We're of those who have died to sin. How can we live it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Christ. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to Christ and Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin should no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we say? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your alliance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourself as slaves to impurity and to every increasing wickedness. So now offer yourself as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness. And the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Family, amen. amen. I love when Ken was saying some things you read lead into some things. And sometimes, uh, as a minister, I've learned, you have to read the whole thing. 
You can't be leaving things out. People got to get a picture of what you're talking about. It's OK to have a scripture here and have a scripture there. But it's good also to read through the Bible so that you understand what God is saying. We must be born again in order to cross over from death to life. There's no option. We got to be baptized. That's the only way you can cross over from death to life. The only way. Crossing over from death to life is a is living a new life in Christ. The old is gone. The new is here. Let me read Second Corinthians five seventeen, the new King James version of it. Listen to this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I love that. Behold. It's like, man, it needs to be. Ah! We're new now. The old is gone. The new is here. That's crossing over. See, have your old gone? Or are you still trying to have a little bit of old and a little bit of new? You can't do that. You either got to have all the new or all the old. There is no in between. God says in another verse, verse, I'm going to spit you out my mouth. There's no lukewarmness. So we got to allow the new to come in our lives. We got to be different. People know how we used to live. My old friends know how I used to live. And so when they meet me now, it's like, OK, what happened to Mark? Well, he became new. I found Jesus. I'll never forget, I was in a restaurant in Dallas, Texas, and I hadn't seen one of my military buddies over 10 years. He showed up at this restaurant called Papa Do's, and, uh, which is uh, like a spicy seafood restaurant. It's good. And my wife and I were sitting there eating. Brittany was a little baby. We had her in a, in a little, uh, what's that, carrier, in a, a, a the stroller. And some guy walked by, and he just looked and went, Harris? I went, yeah, man. And I realized who he was, and we just started yapping it up. It was so good to see him. And we, I started, at that time I was a minister. So I started ministering to him and talking to him and just trying to encourage him. And you live in town? Please, let's get together. This is my wife. This is my child. I found Jesus. Amen. And we walked to the car together. And when I got to the car, he said these words to me. Man, you change. For me, that was a hallelujah. For him, he was disappointed because he wanted the old Mark chasing women, cursing and acting a fool. Getting in fights all the time. No, I found Jesus. I found life. The old was death. I crossed over and you need to come along. He walked away and I never seen him again. I say to you, don't walk away. Cross over. And those who have crossed over, I got some words coming for you later. But I want you to understand that Christ died for our sins and was raised from the dead. This gives us the opportunity to live a new life in Christ. Once we cross over from death to life, sin is no longer our master. It controls us no more. We allow God to control us. And this is where people fall short who think they've crossed over and they wonder why they can't get out of their circle of sin. Because you have never crossed over. And then some people cross over and then go right back to their sins. The word never take root in their hearts. Well, which one are you? We got to make sure that when we cross over, we stay over. Yes. And we don't flirt with sin. Amen. We kick it to the curb. We must be an instrument of righteousness, family. Amen. Friends, when you cross over, the Bible said you're an instrument of righteousness. Amen. Family and friends, we are either slaves to sin that leads to death or we are slaves to obedience that leads to righteousness. Amen. We're either one or the other. 
Because Galatians say you never do what you want to do. You either do for God or you do for Satan. Who do you do for? That's it. Well, I don't believe you, 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 you and Satan, y'all best buds. You doing all his bidding. You got to come to convictions. Because you're either doing for one or the other. And we want to do for God. Are you with me, family? Which ones are we? Friends and family, what are we a slave to? What are we a slave to? Things of the world or things of God? What controls us? What do we long to have? What are we a slave to? What do we think about all the time? See, what's in our hearts? Man, I got to make this money. Man, I got to get my grind. I got my kids. I got bills. What occupies our minds and hearts? Is it things of this world? Or is it things of God? Because we either trust him or we don't. Family and friends, I have another question for you. And I mean this from my heart. What is your end goal in life? Come on, come on, brother. My wife and I, Benita gave me that one. What is your end goal in life? Parents, you need to ask your kids who haven't become Christian. You need to ask them, what's your end goal? What's all, what what you plan on? What's What's your plans? Without God. Because your end goal would be death without God. See, is your end goal making a lot of money? Having a great career? Getting rich? Going off to college and getting your groove and party on so you can find a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Getting married? Or having a family? Or just having a lot of friends because you want to be popular? What is your end goal? What benefit would these things reap for you? Family, friends, the wage of sin is death, the Bible says. But God has a gift for us. But we must be willing to accept it. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord, from death to life. We got to make sure, friends and family, that we're seeking holiness, joy, peace, love, godliness, obedience. Let those things be our end goal, not the things of this world. And family who've crossed over. Hear me when I say this to you. God's not looking for religious people. (laughs) He's looking for committed hearts. Not people who just want to wear a title, but don't live the life. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. I'm going to show you what God says about that. Matthew 7, verse 21. It says, true and false disciples. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. See, see, some of them did in their mind did incredible things for God in their mind. But what it really was for themselves is all about them. Look at me. It cannot be. In what we do, I've learned as a minister, it cannot be about me. That's right. It's got to always be about God. That's right. I'd rather have <laughs> me, Vanita, and a, and a few others than thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people going to hell because they don't right. live by the Bible. Right. 
and the minister accept how they live. They live together, they marry, they're sleeping around, but they don't care because the people give their tithes and they make money. Right. And they don't want to get involved in nobody's life. That is not Christianity. No. That is not crossing over. Right. We got a family, friends, RCC. When I mean, when we cross over, we've got to be really, we, have we really crossed over? We gotta really cross over. Come on, I'm not talking about crossing over. Talking about, oh, I want to go back for a little bit. Yeah. No, we gotta cross over and don't look back. Right. You know. Right. Let me tell you a true story. This happened to me today. It was about 93 degrees today. Hot. I'm out there mowing the lawn. <laughs> so I'm trying to get exercise. And uh, Vanita's brother came over and spent some time with me. That was pretty cool, Stan Fryson. And uh, he left, and, and, uh, and then DJ came over. It was good to spend time with you, DJ. And, uh, and I, but I was out in the yard, and a truck flew by. And uh, I wave. I try to wave at everybody and speak. And as I turned my back, I caught the corner of my eye. The truck did a U-turn. So, whoop. Bus gonna be coming back to say something to me because ain't nobody out here but me. <laughs> you turn. So I'm thinking maybe he'll just stop by the corner of the road and wave. No, uh uh. He pulled right in the driveway. <laughs> Let down his window, him and his wife. Asked me to come over. Came over. They said, My wife and I talk about you all the time. You're always waving and speaking. I said, Oh, that's the guy that said, told me one time I must be a Christian. And he said, I knew it. And I'm thinking, because I wave and speak. Because that boy, sometimes I, but he, 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 that's what, he, because the way our world is. And he's, I'm black and he's white. And he's a lot older than me. And then he said, I just, I told my wife that you are a minister. And we pulled back because we just want to pray. Can we pray with you? I'm like, whoa. He said, my wife has some things that come back in our life that, we thought had been eradicated. And she said, I believe the only way this is going to take care of get out of my body is through prayer. Yeah. Wow. And will you please pray for me? I said, absolutely. Yeah. I had somebody on the phone. I told them, you can join the prayer too. And they said, oh, sorry, we didn't know you was on the phone. I said, that's okay. They, they just called and you pulled in and God meant for all of us to pray. So let's pray. Yeah. This is not a coincidence. Right. In fact, it was DJ. So I said, let's pray. And uh, 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 which is Shadarin's brother. And so he said, OK. <laughs> and so I prayed. And what the, what I prayed was. God, not my will, but your will be done. Yeah. And I say, Father, if you eradicate this. Let them give you glory yeah. right. and be praising your name for what you have done. Right. And to God be the glory. Yeah. Amen. Do you know at one hour later that woman called me back and let me know she's going to keep in touch with me? Amen. I said, oh, Lord, <laughs> we're going to see. We're, we're going to make sure we're, God's building a relationship. Amen. I say all that to ask you this. What does your neighbors and your coworkers think of you? Do they know you have crossed over? Do they know you by your life? And is that the problem? Because they know you a three dollar bill, mm. wow. you're faking the funk, Come on. or do they know that you are genuine? You are who you say you are. Right. Yeah. Right. Family, let's be who we say we are, Come on. Christians. Right. Let's cross over and stay over. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We must not be religious people, and we must not be hypocrites. Yeah. Remember, we've crossed over from death to life, and we have a lot to be grateful for. Look at Galatians chapter 6. I'm excited about get, sharing these words with your family, preaching God's words. And I pray that something is said that moves and stirs your heart to draw you closer to God. That's what I pray every week before I come up, that something be said that will help the RCC family and those who listen get convicted, Humble 
and draw closer to God. Amen. Because I'm using his words, right. not mine. I'm here to glorify him and not myself. Amen. Galatians 6, verse 79. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit, from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. Yes. Family and friends, we reap what we sow. That's right. What are we sowing? Are we sowing selfishness, laziness, hatred, division, gossip, unbelief? Or are we sowing love, joy, peace, dedication to God, perseverance, faithfulness? Remember, family and friends, we reap what we sow. What are you sowing? I was thinking about, I got another story to tell you about Rochelle, our sister. The elder's wife. She's been going to rehab. And she'd been sowing seeds and living the life. She met someone who was getting married and was looking for a preacher. She said, Hey, my preacher will take care of you. So she gave the person my number and called Vanita and gave her her number and said, Y'all give them a call. And we did. We met with them on Zoom. Now, Rochelle didn't know, neither did me and Vanita know, that they are getting married on Friday. <laughs> and so they were concerned, like, I wonder how he's going to handle this. And I told them this. If you was getting married tonight, I would do it. Because I'd rather you live the way God says live than the way you are living. I would do it immediately. So Friday would be no problem. And they said, amen. <laughs> That's how we feel. I said, so I see you on the 4th of July at church, right? They said, yep. I don't want no money. Don't want anything. Just come and worship with us. So I look forward to you family meeting them. But look at God. This, we need more stories like that. I look forward to us coming back on the 4th of July and as a body of Christ sharing incredible things that God is doing. And worshiping God and giving him all glory and Amen. praise and honor. Amen. It's about God, family. Yes. It's about him and his son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins. Crossed on from death to life for Jesus. Amen. Turn with me to 1 John as I begin to wind down. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. I want to read a little bit again. Everyone who believes that Jesus the Christ is born of God and everyone who loves the father loves the child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it's the spirit who testified because the spirit is the truth. For there are three that testifies. The spirit, the water and the blood. And the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God which he has given about his son. Whoever believes in the son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar. Whoa! Whoa! Because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. We got to cross over and stay over. We must not call God a liar. To not believe 
and saying God is a liar. It is a dreadful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. He does not lie. And we better come to these convictions. And his commands are not burdensome. We better hear these words, family. I read them from God's words, the Bible. And we need to hump up. Family and friends, we must have Jesus to cross over from death to life. We must keep his commands and the commands are not burdensome. His word is to help us, not harm us. To reward us with life for obeying, not kill us. We must stop listening to Satan, the devil, and all his lies and cross over and stay over. He does not want us to cross over. He wants you to believe that, oh, man, you, you have no more control of your life. You cross over. Oh, it's over. Parties are over. You can't do anything. All these rules. You got to stop listening to those lies. His word is to give us life. Stop bowing down to Satan. Because when you don't cross over, then you're worshiping him. And you're doing his bidding. He is a liar. And we must gain these convictions, family. Let's close with Acts 2, 36. Let's close with Acts 2. And we're going to read some more. We're not just going to read Acts 2. Let's read. Start in verse 36. Therefore, let all Israel be assured this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise for you and your children and for all who are far off. For all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. Those who accept his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to the number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together, had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who have been saved. Family. To cross over from death to life, we must repent of our sins and be baptized. We need to come out of the water saying, hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm not going back. I cross over one by one. We're moving on to the setting sun. Come on now. Y'all better be glad I can't sing. Man, I'd be, what? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stand my lane, but you better be glad your preacher can't sing. Okay, I can preach. Amen. But Lord have mercy. I'd be wanting to sing a little bit. Most people do not repent of their sins. They think they become Christians, but their lives do not change. Because they don't repent. They do not cross over from death to life. After we cross over from death to life, we must be devoted to the word. Devoted to prayer. Devoted to fellowship. Devoted to our relationship with God. Devoted to praising God. Devoted to worshiping God. Devoted to read our Bibles. Devoted, devoted, devoted to God. If you have not crossed over from death to life, cross over. Stop messing around. If we have crossed over from death to life, stay over in life. And leave the devil behind. And move on. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Good morning, RCC family. Good morning. My name is Tim Young. I'm one of the deacons that serves here, and I have the honor to re uh, respond to this message. What an incredible and impactful message. Amen. Let's give God glory. This, this is a, an amazing message. I, I loved how 
it really causes us to think. It really causes us to stop and to look at our lives. Uh, if you're not looking at your life, then something's wrong. We need to be looking and, and, and seeing this. Have we crossed over from death to life? Um, if we have already, then we need to stay over. And when Mark was talking about that staying over and, and not being religious and, and making sure that we're uh, continuing, one of the things that really jumped out at me was, and, and it was in Romans 6, don't let sin reign. It says we must, let, we, uh, I put, we must let righteousness reign and not sin reign. And so when I'm thinking about crossing over, you know, do we still have a bridge that we can even go back over to the other side? We should have gotten rid of that bridge. Once we cross over, we need to make sure that there's nothing back there for us, nothing that we want to even go back. We should continue to look forward and move the way God's called us to move. Amen. I'm excited. Um, where are we? That's basically what I got from this. Where, where are you today? Uh, we, need to, we need to see what's in our hearts, what occupies our minds, what is our end goal? That was a, a great question. You know, we need, especially we think about our young, young uh, people in, in our family, uh, what, what's their goals in life? What are they really focused on and what really matters? You know, when we think about, and that just brings me back to another sermon we talked about, you know, in Ecclesiastes, really, what does it all really matter? What, is, yes. what does life matter? You know, it's all the way, way to the end you know, it's going to be about eternity. It's going to be about what, what happens now. You know, so we need to be focused on that now and not, uh -huh. not later. Uh, what is our goal in life? It should be heaven. Um, I love when he talked about sowing also. You know, uh, what are we sowing? We reap what we sow. Um, are we sowing the seeds, you know, that brings righteousness? Or are we continuing to sow the seeds that, of this world? You know, um, let us let's make sure our, we're, we're guarding our hearts in, the, in those areas. I did also, um, you know, I love the fact you said God's not looking for religious people. Am I religious or am I righteous? Is it about me or is it about God? And I have to ask myself that daily because I can find myself being about me and I can find myself being religious because I'm kind of going through the motions. But am I really is it really about God and am I really being try, striving to be righteous and not just religious? Amen. Great, great stuff. I'm really looking forward to all the conversations on GroupMe. Let's continue to use all the tools that God's given us to continue to fellowship, to continue to get uh, fed spiritually as well and, and, and with our families. We should be feeding ourselves as well every day, uh, but just grateful for the thirsty soul. Looking forward to GroupMe and being able to respond there. Even the kids are getting what they need through the uh, RCC kids. And we're just excited about what God's doing, but we are looking forward to July 4th. We keep praying about that. I know we're going to be excited we're all excited about that and can't wait. I know the snippets of the songs. I'm, I can't wait to sing with you guys. I can't wait to hug you guys. And I can't wait to be back in the fellowship. And uh, that, that's just awesome. That's, that's God. He's going to uh, bless us when we have the opportunity to do that again. And we're going to really uh, be, be full. So let's uh, go to God in prayer. Amen. Father, we're so grateful for what you're doing and the way you love us and the way you use Mark in a powerful way. And you use it each of us as well, God. Help us to say things to people that make them think. God, help us to keep your words in our hearts so we don't sin against you. God, help us to hate what is evil and cling to what is good. And help us to, to cross over to life from death. God, if anyone is contemplating or thinking about it, God, help them make that decision. Help them to see that there's nothing here in this world that's worth anything. God, that we make the decision to cross over and that Jesus is the way, Father, to lead us to life and eternal life and to a relationship with you. God, thank you uh, for those. I pray for all of us that are Christians and been Christians. God, help us stay in the fight. Help us stay cross over. Help us get rid of our bridges and not try to go back, God, but to continue to keep going forward and continue to give you glory and honor. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.